this video, a 73-year-old woman has just completed her 500th scuba dive in this episode. She has a deep appreciation for the marine environment. She is enthusiastic about sharks. As she surfaces on her most recent dove, however, she fails to notice the shadowy figure of a tiger shark that is approaching her, only inches away from safety. And midway up the swim ladder on the boat, she feels a sharp tug on her leg. Will she live to dove another day? Click like and subscribe. Welcome to Wild Assault. Heidi Ernst was a scuba diving enthusiast. She had extensive experience in the underwater environment. It was her passion, her most enjoyable pastime. Despite being 73 years old, she was certainly not slowing down. In fact, she completed her 500th scuba dive in May 2023, a rare accomplishment. At home in Iowa, she certainly had an appetite for adventure. She was devoted to both her miniature schnauzer, Billy Ben, and her horse, Sonny. She was in peak physical condition, almost four decades of employment as a physical therapist. Impressive. Initially, she was also a powerlifter and fitness expert. Just one month after her 500th scuba dive, she traveled to the Bahamas, specifically Grand Bahama, on June 20, 23. Located just 64 miles east of Florida's Palm Beach, this location is stunning, with white, flower-covered sands, palm trees, and turquoise waters. It is a beautiful destination for vacationers. In addition, scuba diving in the Bahamas is suitable for divers of all skill levels. On the islands, reef dives, shark dives, and wreck dives are popular and attract a variety of marine life. Last among sharks. Heidi had previously visited the Bahamas. There, she had been diving for 11 years. The extraordinary marine life and underwater photography opportunities kept her returning. Heidi boarded a 32-foot motorboat on June 7th. The weather was sunny and warm. She donned her swimsuit and sat on the back of the boat, admiring the scenery as they approached the diving location, appropriately titled Shark Junction. The sea was relatively tranquil as it rolled with the waves. They arrived at the destination. The boat hovered above the rookery. Heidi donned fins and diving equipment. She rolled into the water and submerged in a bubble cloud. The ocean's brilliant blue enveloped her. The beautiful marine life covered the reef beneath her. She swam downward, observing the beautiful reef fish as they darted and flitted. She carried her underwater camera with her at all times. Each scuba dive into the ocean was captured in detail. But what happened next? Heidi had accomplished her mission and was now on her way to the surface. She saw the silhouette of the boat floating above her as she looked up. She swam upwards, kicking her fins back and forth to propel herself closer to the boat while keeping her eyes on the boat's hull. Heidi failed to notice a shadow again approaching her from below. A tiger shark observed its potential prey as it swam away. As the 73-year-old woman clung to the swim ladder at the back of the boat, its eyes were riveted on her. Heidi climbed the rungs of the ladder while removing her face mask and her mouthpiece. If she had been aware that she was being pursued by a top predator, she would have exited the water. If she had known what was about to occur, she might have been able to pull herself from the water in time. She was about to hand the boatman her mask when she felt a strong pull on one of her legs. The force of the tug nearly dragged her into the water. She felt as if a truck had struck her. She immediately looked down and witnessed the horrifying head of a massive tiger shark. Its jaws were tightly gripping her lower leg. She felt the excruciating pain as his head was tossed from side to side. The water foamed and splashed. She was aware that she was in imminent danger of being dragged into the water, drawn into the jaws of a formidable predator. She needed to fight back in order to survive. Consequently, she gripped the rung of the ladder with both hands. She struck the shark's head and nose as hard as she could. As Heidi continued to strike the shark, it eventually let go. Blood poured into the water from her gaping wound. A member of the boat's crew yelled at her to exit the water. She did not pause. She climbed the ladder and scrambled onto the boat while looking down at her injured leg. Can she survive, she thought. She was losing considerable blood. Fred Riger, a member of the crew, administered first aid. He secured a tourniquet to her leg. Heidi felt her life slipping away from her. She believed she was about to die. She believed this to be the end. Three years ago, she had recently lost her husband to cancer. And now, her family would have to bid her farewell. Fred, however, tightened the tourniquet as much as possible. It appeared to be functioning. It slowed down the blood flow. The bottom of the boat was discolored and red, which swirled as the vessel rocked. 
they returned to shore at full speed. Heidi lay in the boat in excruciating pain, hoping against hope that she would survive. Here as Heidi had been diving, she never felt threatened by any of the sharks she had encountered. As Heidi snaps photos of them swimming around her, they had never displayed any signs of aggression. They were part of the marine ecosystem, and she had swum with a number of them previously. She was aware of the risks and knew how to avoid them. This attack caught her completely off guard. Heidi was rushed to the Rand Memorial Hospital in Freeport, Grand Bahamas, as soon as the boat returned to shore. Once she was stabilized, she was airlifted to the Jackson Ryder Trauma Center in Miami. She was aware upon arrival and discussed her treatment options with surgeons. They were constrained. The injury to her calf was serious. The surgeons were unsure if they could save the leg, but they were willing to try. If they were successful, she could face a long, arduous journey with a constant risk of infection and limited use of the limb. Heidi chose to have the lower portion of her leg amputated. This would likely expedite her recovery. It was unexpected, but it appeared to be the correct choice. Heidi received six or seven blood transfusions and six surgical procedures in the days following her amputation. The specialist reconnected the nerves in her lower leg to her muscles in an effort to alleviate her pain and enhance her recovery. Heidi has a lengthy journey ahead of her. She will likely require additional procedures as she recovers, but she is currently optimistic. Kimberly Barnes, a friend of Heidi's, created a GoFundMe page to help cover her medical and travel expenses. Over a week after the attack, Heidi remained hospitalized in Miami. She had neither been discharged nor returned to Iowa. When she finally returned home, Heidi, stay optimistic. She has conducted research on prosthetic diving fins for amputees despite her inability to dive. Her love for marine life is ingrained in her very being. She will not surrender it so easily.